Um, thank you for starting the recording. That was the next thing I was going to ask. Um, today we're going to be walking through the Urban Economic Development and Resilience Master Track here at IHS. This is part of the webinar series explaining the Urban Management uh, and Development Master's course we do here at IHS. So my name is Fergal Raftery. Uh, I'm the Admissions Officer here at IHS uh, and I'm here today with some of my colleagues, uh, Dr. Paula Nagler and Beatrice uh, Calzada Olvera. Uh, these are two of our um, academic staff who work within the Urban Economic Development and Resilience faculty uh, and who work together to coordinate this master's track. Uh, so today we've prepared a short presentation uh, just to walk through uh, a bit more information about what the course entails, what you'll be studying if you're interested in it. So these webinars are designed to give as much information as possible to prospective students. Uh, so we'll walk through the content of the programme, but we'll also look at some practical information, um, how to make an application, um, some important dates and some figures that you, uh, it's important that you guys know, um, as well as some uh, scholarship information, hopefully as well. Uh, so the presentation we've prepared, uh, it's about uh, 20, 30 minutes. Uh, it should only, um, and so we have left about an hour though. So um, primarily, this is a, we hope this is a Q&A session. Um, so once we've finished, what we'll do is we'll collect all the questions at the end and we'll answer them individually. So if you have any, any questions during the presentation, please feel free to uh, write them down uh, and we'll circle back at the, end of the, at the end of the presentation and answer them one by one. Okay, so as I said, the agenda for today, um, we're going to be looking, I'm going to provide a small introduction into IHS as an institution, um, what we study, uh, what a typical student background uh, would be um, in, the, in the topic. Um, and then once we've done a sort of general overview, um, I'll hand over to um, my academic colleagues who will explain the course content in a, a bit more detail. Uh, so the idea is that we'll um, introduce the logic of the program um, and then contextualize it by looking at sort of who our typical IHS students might be, uh, what our recent students have completed as part of their research, um, and the jobs that some of our recent alumni have gone on to do after they finished their course with us. So moving on to the next slide, please. So just to introduce the program in a little bit more detail, the Urban Management and Development Program um, is our flagship course at IHS. Uh, every year we welcome between 100 to 150 uh, different urban specialists or urban professionals. Um, this is across all six of the master's tracks within the Urban Management and Development Program. Uh, so the structure of the course means that of these 150 students, they'll be split, split between the uh, six master's tracks, which means that we're working sort of class sizes typically of about uh, 15 students to 30 students um, in terms of the track specific learning that you'll be doing. Um, however, um, urban development is a very inter interdisciplinary approach and uh, topic. And as such, we make sure that uh, you're not, you won't be only learning within uh, your track. So even in block one and block two, um, there will be exposure to, to, to different uh, special specializations at IHS and the research that we do. Um, so uh, this, typically in block one, this would be sort of, uh, there'll be different modes of assessment. So you'll be doing sort of lecture and seminar work that you might be familiar with. Uh, we also put a big focus on group activity uh, and group work, as well as uh, action planning workshops and different simulations and to um, sort of explore urban development from different uh, fields and focuses. So each block listed here runs for about 10 weeks at a time um, and contain the different assessment types that I've just listed. Uh, typically, uh, these are quite intensive periods when you're learning from all our different academic faculties um, and we're all sort of winding down around the March period where your thesis period will start um, and the thesis period will run all the way up until uh, graduation late in September. Um, so now that I've done a brief overview of the uh, structure of the programme itself, I'd like to hand over to my academic colleagues uh, Beatrice and Paula who might be able to talk a bit more about the, uh, the academic side of the content. Thank you. Thank you, Virgo. Um, so my name is Beatrice, as already Virgo indicated. I am the UED coordinator. Um, my background is um, I am a PhD candidate in economics and um, policy studies of technological change in Maastricht University and the United Nations um, Institute Merit. Um, my well, basically, this is our academic team. Um, 
Here with me today is Paula Nagler, who will introduce herself. Yeah, also welcome from my side. My name is Paula Nagler. I'm part of the Urban Economics Development Team, and besides that, I'm also the Head of Economics and Governance Department here at IHS. I contribute uh, in different points uh, to the specialization, and my main uh, point is urban labor markets. Uh, my background is um, a PhD in uh, public policy and policy analysis of the same institute as Beatrice, so Union Merit in Maastricht. And I have, um, I'm in, in addition, I'm also the coordinator of the urban data analytics course, which is part of the core period. And my background is, um, yeah, as mentioned, like in public uh, policy analysis. And I've also um, plenty of years of experience in education and in teaching at the university level. Besides that, I've also done a lot of consultancies for the World Bank, for UNIDO and other international organizations. And I'm had like I'm moving back here to Beatriz. <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you a little bit more about the rest of our team. Uh, we also have uh, Professor Frank van Oort. Uh, Frank is a full professor from uh, Erasmus, from the Economics uh, School of at Erasmus. Uh, School of Economics, sorry, mm -hmm. Professor of Urban and Regional Economics at Erasmus School of Economics. And um, he focuses on topics such as place-based policies, innovation, and so on. Uh, we also have Dr. Jan Franzen, who is also another colleague who specializes in um, topics such as uh, grassroots innovation, community resilience, and different aspects involving um, resilience at different levels. So uh, basically, this is our team. Myself, I am more involved in the data analysis aspect of the course. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about my profile and a little bit about Paula's profile. Next slide, please. Okay, so as I already mentioned, um, here at um, IHS, I specialize in statistics, econometrics analysis. I also teach economic development um, together with Jan um, in a short course on local economic development. And um, I also have experience teaching um, about economics and business environment in Latin America. Regarding my experience in consultancies, I have done um, different projects, such as um, a project with the ITP on sustainable value chains in Latin America. Uh, at the moment, together with Paula, I'm also working on different inequality diagnostics across Africa, across uh, Asia, and also covering Latin America. Regarding my research, I focus on innovation, natural resources, structural transformation, and economic growth. And um, I'll tell you a little bit more about Paula's, but I think um, she's best qualified to give you a little bit more of the details on her background. So a bit more about my background. So I have been teaching statistics and econometrics for um, over 10 years, and I still do so. Then, as mentioned before, in a specialization, I focus on urban labor markets, but also more generally, also like on labor topics, uh, entrepreneurship. And I've been teaching also in another university, um, so not in this program, but I still teach us about informalities, informal businesses, and informal enterprise in Latin America. Um, currently, I'm involved as a team lead in the inequality diagnostics of GSZ that also Beatriz uh, just referred. And as a researcher, I'm working on urbanization and the impact of COVID-19. So how different um, you know, city sizes and urban densities are related to COVID-19 incidences and mortality. And second, on regional uh, differences within countries. These are like the two research topics I'm currently working on. And I will go back to Beatriz. Okay. So thank you, Paula. Why study urban economic development? Well, cities and regions are constantly developing economically and competing with each other for talent, knowledge, investment, trade, tourists, etc. Um, recent economic shocks at the global and local level, for instance, um, the global pandemic, Brexit, and other shocks of that sort, underscore the importance of economic resilience in the research um, 
and policy agenda, as well as entrepreneurship and innovation. The latter also relate uh, to current challenges, such as incorporating environmental sustainability while ensuring uh, economic development. So as we know, at the moment, we have to think of how to incorporate um, issues such as uh, AI into labor markets and thinking, okay, but what's going to happen to many other workers that are using, for instance, uh, that are being employed in simple skilled industries. At the same time, we also have the issue of climate change that demands um, now that even less developed countries adopt certain sustainability practices. Um, the global pandemic, as we know, also questions the role of services and the role of certain um, measures in how in, in, in sustaining economic development. So all these issues and many more are addressed in this visualization. Next. So um, why study um, urban economic development at IHS? Well, we have international experts in applied research, as we've seen, all of our team has both academic as well as practical experience. Um, we have a broad and powerful alumni network in different fields. And uh, Rotterdam basically is a perfect sample of how uh, urban innovation plays out. We have um, different um, innovation hubs in the city that could be used as a good um, case, case study. And we're, we have a truly international and diverse environment. Fergal can tell you a little bit more about all the nationalities that we have in this, uh, in this master. And uh, this is a master's of science from a top 100 university. And we're always um, up to date thanks to the different trainings that are carried out. So uh, special features, um, this program in particular blends state-of-the-art theories and applied research skills concerning urban and regional economic development. Uh, we also build on the knowledge that students acquire during the core period to develop and strengthen um, their data analysis skills. Um, we also have a broad applicability in the sense that students um, have the possibility to analyze a wide range of urban related issues from an economic perspective, from housing, entrepreneurship, innovation, um, local economic growth to, okay, sorry, can we go back? <laughs> so to uh, labor markets, for instance. And finally, uh, we apply the theories that you learn in the classroom to real life case studies. So although we build on theory, this is very much um, case based uh, in the way we apply it. And we always try to go from a more intuitive perspective um, to really apply state of the art concepts as I've, and theories, as I already mentioned. Okay, these are some examples of recent master's um, thesis from our UED students. Um, for instance, uh, governing urban transformation, the case of Kirana in northern Sweden, which is a case of a mining town that has moved 50 kilometers away and it explores how um, governance processes played out in the process. We also have uh, green competitiveness in FDI in BRICS countries, panel data evidence. Uh, we also have this uh, thesis on innovation districts between young firms and employment formation, which also looks at some of the innovation hubs uh, here in Rotterdam that I previously mentioned to illustrate how uh, innovation hubs and the creation of employment interact. And finally, the impact of high-skilled migrants on housing affordability. So in this case, the student wanted to explore the elasticity uh, between uh, high-skilled migration and housing prices in Rotterdam. Okay, should I? 
Should I continue? Okay. So these are some examples of uh, industries um, that, and well, basically different positions that our alumni um, are in. And for instance, we have uh, town planners, mobility advisors, urban planners, sustainability, and LCA analysts, consultants in um, in different innova innovation consultancies, uh, data strategies, and um, well, also a few uh, PhD candidates. So um, basically we see that our students are coming from very diverse uh, backgrounds from architecture to civil engineering also um, of course, we have a few economists and, and people that are already in the development studies areas, as well as people working in land resource management. In terms of their previous experience, we have people who have been consultants, who have been already uh, occupied in urban planning, scientific researchers, business intelligence managers, and data analysts. So we can say that although our our program is very focused on social sciences. The background of our students is quite diverse, as well as their the, the level of um, experience that they have. Yeah, maybe I can just jump in on that as well, just to uh, reinforce Beatrice's point. Um, we always say there really is no one type of IHS student. I think you can see from uh, the breadth of experiences and the backgrounds of students, both geographically and through academic discipline, it's extremely broad. Um, so a question we would con uh, we get very often in the admissions office is if I am uh, have the right background to join IHS. And we always say there is no one type of student. Um, and what we really see is that um, um, development studies or urban development um, is a very broad and interdisciplinary topic. And so what we're doing is we're training people with skills in a, in a sector already. They may be engineers, they may be architects, um, they may be economists by trade, and we're um, uh, providing them new skills or possibly retraining them so that they can deploy it within a, a development space. Um, but as you can see from the maps and these background, um, this, this breakdown, um, it's, it's hugely diverse and international, as we were saying before. Maybe can we move to the next slide? Yes. Okay. So uh, just in terms of some practical matters, um, we we hope that these uh, webinars are instructive and informative, and so you're getting all the right information that you need. So some important uh, practical stuff to keep in mind. So the program is an intensive one year program. Uh, we always think it's important to say that. Um, so uh, you, students do take on part time work sometimes, but really we're here to um, um, try and give you as much um, information and sort of uh, um, expose you to as many topics as possible within a condensed period of time so you can re-enter the labour force with these new skills as quickly as possible. Um, so the programme will always start in September um, and uh, normally starts at sort of the end of, the, of September in one year um, and will wrap up at the end of August the following year. So it's, a, it's an intensive sort of 11 month programme. Um, the tuition fee for the programme is 14,900 uh, euros. Um, so if that uh, it's always an important uh, number to keep in mind, but we do always direct students to uh, the scholarship database that we uh, maintain on our website. Um, this is a global resource that provides a, um, a cursory overview of the funding options that might be available to you if um, you're looking at scholarship options. But also the, in the admissions office, we're always um, willing to sort of provide additional feedback and guidance on these questions. The most important thing uh, we always think to bear in mind um, is, to, is to think about the application deadlines. These are rigid dates that can't be changed um, and we obviously want to make sure that you have as much time as possible to prepare an application. Um, so uh, for non-EU or international students, um, the application deadline um, is uh, the 1st of June. Uh, we always uh, ask that students um, complete the application uh, by the 15th of April, however. Um, there is an early bird discount of 1,000 euros on the tuition fee. Um, and so any payments received before June 1st um, means that we can provide um, a small tuition waiver towards your education as well. Um, can we look at the next slide, please? Yes, admissions requirements. So um, as uh, we were saying, so if the, in the IHS classroom, we have architects, we have development specialists, we have economists, we have 
um, all kinds of people. Um, and so our admissions criteria are deliberately designed to be able to accommodate uh, this level of international variety and sort of difference in backgrounds. Generally, we want to look at any sort of um, degree, undergraduate degree to be completed to a high academic level. So we ask for either a 2-1 uh, British or uh, a British qualification or an equivalent standard, which is a B um, or sort of 8, um, 8.5. Really what we're looking for is an ability to sort of um, adapt and sort of absorb the way that we sort of um, provide education at IHS, which means that we really favour uh, people with some professional experience. Generally two to three years within a relevant field is ideal. What we want to see is you have an ability to uh, work within groups, um, anticipate problems, uh, mediate through different uh, issues and sort of working with an international sector uh, with different cultural backgrounds is also highly prioritised. Uh, we ask for a, um, uh, evidence of English ability. This might be competing, completing your um, undergraduate degree uh, in English. Um, if you cannot provide evidence of that, we would do also accept the IELTS test with a 6.5 overall score um, or an equivalent um, standard. You can find more information about the qualifications on our admissions page on our website. Um, as I said, working experience is always um, an asset. Um, and so to, uh, if, we look at numerous uh, criteria with, when, uh, as a, an admissions uh, framework. So it's about your academic quality, your working experience. And we also ask for you to complete a letter of motivation, a short essay assignment. So we understand your sort of interest within the field of urban development as well. OK, so we hope that was informative. We hope that we covered all the main bases of that um, presentation. Um, and so now we can open up the floor to any uh, questions people might have. Uh, feel free to turn on your camera, feel free to uh, unmute yourselves and ask us directly. Otherwise, we can uh, work through the chat function and answer the questions one by one. OK, so I'm just going to load the chat now and maybe I'll just work from the top. And if any questions come through, uh, me or Beatrice or Paola will do our best to answer them as well as possible. So I have a question. Uh, can I apply for this course if I do not have a background in economics? Yeah, I yeah. okay. So I'm um, taking this question uh, now. And uh, the answer is actually very short. Yes, absolutely. Um, we, as Fergal already mentioned, we have a wide, wide variety of um, bachelor graduates in um, the specialization track. And what is also very important to emphasize that even if you don't have any economics uh, background, like we start from zero. So we don't assume you know anything in this regard. And it's very, in a very accessible course also for non-economists. So we're not like focusing on, you know, like, you know, like really, I don't know, like deep economic theory. It's really like the, the focus on, um, on application, on cases. So we do um, also quantitative methods, but again, like to focus on interpretation, it's really like, what does it mean? Like, how do you translate this into uh, policy implications, for example? And we can also um, let you know that we have had already quite a few students in the past who were planners, who were architects, who were really coming from all kinds of backgrounds and they have successfully um, graduated from the specialization tracks in, in urban economics. Yes, so uh, as we already mentioned, this year we had anything from people who had studied mathematics to people who have had specialized in architecture and um, it's not like one uh, type of profile is always performing better than the other it really depends on the student and we just provide the let's say the tools so everybody can um, develop skills along the lines of, of their own academic interests so uh, if you are interested in applying to this program, but you are hesitating because of your background, um, at least that that should not be your concern. Thanks, Bear. I think also something that uh, I would always sort of stress to students from uh, as a member of the admissions office is if you have questions or if you're unsure if your background is maybe completely applicable, uh, the good news is that we have a very long admissions period. So we're taking applications all the way up until um, uh, April and May, as we said earlier. So 
you have many months to prepare an application. So if you have questions or if you're unsure of your background, please feel free to send us an email. Uh, we're always happy to answer your questions. I know Beatrice and Paolo are always very happy to sort of answer these questions too. Um, you don't need to just rely on webinars or um, doing your re own research from our website. We're always happy to answer your questions individually. Um, okay, so I will um, answer this question in the chat. Um, will we work with quantitative and statistical programs? Yes, we do. Um, this is, let's say, you start during the core period, as Fergal already explained. Uh, we have a core period in which we try to have everybody um, to give everybody the same basic principles in terms of a statistical um, analysis and also basic knowledge of um, Stata. We work with Stata, although, yeah, these are also principles that you could apply if you want to work with different statistical programs. Um, Paula actually is the coordinator of that, um, of that course. Um, and later on, during the specialization, we build on that and uh, we teach, um, let, let's say, we, we start exploring and uh, using other models, um, yeah, for that could be, let's say, more applicable to certain types of, uh, or let's say, to more commonly used uh, analysis in, in, in innovation and in uh, development economics. Um, and is this the, okay? So I hope I answered that question. Now I'll read. Is the topic of smart cities sport, explored in this track? Is this track the appropriate one for the topic? Okay, so um, smart cities as such is not explored in this track, but because smart cities is highly related to. Um, innovation and, and, and let's say the dynamics of a city, I wouldn't say it's completely um, far off. I would say you could definitely analyze smart cities from an economics perspective, but if you're more interested in it as a urban planner, perhaps the smart, the, we have a different specialization that really focuses on that. I'm hoping I addressed um, that question. Now, is GIS part of the specialization track? Um, it's part of the core period. Uh, in the core period, um, we tried, as I said, to give students all the tools like GIS, um, basics of quantitative analysis, and also the basics of qualitative analysis. So by the time you're entering your specialization track, you already have all the basic methods that you could use. So you know what your possibilities are to write a thesis, to explore different topics. And, um, and definitely GIS is one of those skills that we, that we offer um, in the core period. Um, yeah, I, maybe, okay. Yes, uh, let me know if you have any other questions. Um, I One thing that I would like to clarify, because sometimes um, students that are interested in this, in this, um, in this topic, it, well, they want to know whether we're focusing on finance, uh, on, on financial issues, on the financial market, and if we are exploring, um, let's say, entrepreneurship, let's say, in a perspective that you would explore in an MBA. And that is definitely not the case. Uh, we focus on issues related to economic development, but economic development, of course, takes into consideration issues pertaining environment and um, also inequality and other social aspects that are also part of economic analysis. So this is focused on um, development issues. Are development issues just focused on developing countries? No, of course not. 
these are uh, issues that affect perhaps differently different uh, regions of the world. So, of course, some issues like, uh, for instance, the corona pandemic will not affect the north the same as they would affect the, the global south. So these are the kind of things that we focus on. Now, I uh, missed a question. Am I able to contribute to IHS projects as part of my final thesis topic? Um, I will let Paula answer this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking this one and the answer is a bit like, you know, the famous, it depends. It depends because um, it depends on the projects that uh, will be executed at the moment you're writing your thesis. It depends also if it's an advisory uh, project um, that is really like more like a consultancy or if it's a research project where, you know, within this research project, there's certain aspects that you could research. So it's, um, it's in principle, neither a yes or no. So yes, there are certainly possibilities. And yes, um, I know of various students who have been part of a research project in the past with the thesis, but it's not like an absolute guarantee because as I said, it really depends of what kind of um, projects are being you know, executed at the moment. And also then in this regard, uh, what also is your personal interest, you know, because if you're interested, um, let's say in housing economics, but at this moment, there's no housing economics project, but a, you know, a project in economic inequality, then this fit uh, might not be there or um, like you have to twist it too much and then maybe it becomes too far away. So yes, there's a possibility, but it really depends. Okay. Um, so I have another question here and a comment from one of the people who just joined us. Uh, okay, so uh, good afternoon, uh, Amadeo. Uh, we're already in the afternoon here so thanks for joining us from colombia and um i yeah i think i have an additional question about quantitative analysis um no in this case um the question well basically natalia is asking us if uh, you follow this program if you have to focus only on uh, quantitative analysis or quantitative, uh, or if it's purely quantitative, no, of course not. Um, economic, economic analysis, of course, because of its nature is naturally uh, suitable to be analyzed from a quantitative perspective, but uh, we always have students that decide to explore their topics from a qualitative perspective, and that is perfectly okay. The only thing that we do make sure is that if you come to this track, that you at least know how to interpret and how to, let's say, read and understand what um, economics uh, articles describe. So that would be it. And I think I've answered all of the questions. If there's anything else, please let me know. Um, yeah, thanks, Beatrice. I think that was really helpful. I think um, lots of people uh, have lots of questions at the stage. And, it's, and as we were saying, with, as regards to working on projects or uh, do you work from a specific field of specialization or are you only quantitative? Um, it's very hard to sort of accommodate that. We, I mean, if, if the topic is right and we can provide the supervision, almost anything is possible. I'm just thinking about one of the previous slides where uh, it explains some of the previous research that our uh, students have done for their research topic. Um, and equally, we always make it clear that um, you can, uh, your qualification, if you do this track, will be in um, urban economic uh, development and resilience. Um, but you are also still um, exposed and welcome to work with our other faculties at IHS too. So one of the research topics that they've did was uh, looking at uh, high skilled migration and the effect on property prices. So that obviously very neatly uh, affects our housing specialization as well. And so what you could definitely do is you could work together with Beatrice and Paola or one of our other economists and also one of our specialists in the housing team depending on if that works within your topic or your field of interest. So um, we don't try and pigeonhole you. Uh, we have a, a wide selection of different um, areas of specialization at IHS. And it's always great to see the sort of topics and collaborations that our students make when they're sort of working through their research topics themselves. Um, so yeah, if any of that was interesting to you, um, we hope that we can hear from you. I know 
just looking at some of the names, I recognize some of you guys from the admission inbox already. But yeah, if you have any other questions, please ask us now. But otherwise, I think we'll uh, we'll start wrapping up. Uh, but I'd like to thank you from uh, on behalf of uh, IHS and Beatrice and Paula uh, for what I think was a really uh, stimulating conversation. And I hope we answered some of your questions. So yeah, thank you very much, guys. And I'll, uh, I'll uh, 